have our interview with Sash Jordan. And oh my God, does Sass lay it all out there? She went online and started talking about all these different times she had with Ed and Al back in 1996. She spends four months with them and we interview with her all about it. And that is all coming up next. Take a listen. I think they're going to sum up Van Halen, by the way, I'm going to put my gravestone up and it's going to say, here folks, have one on me. I told you I didn't feel well. Author Greg Renoff is back with a new book, Ted Templeman, A Platinum Producer's Life and Music, the new biography of the record producer Ted Templeman, who went on to produce Van Halen, the Doobie Brothers, Van Morrison, Aerosmith, Sammy Hagar, and more. The book, which runs 1995, and it's currently available at Amazon.com. From the man who brought you Van Halen Rising comes Ted Templeman, a platinum producer's life and music, written by Templeman as told to Greg Renoff. Available for only $19.95 at Amazon.com. Order it today. Need a laugh? Check out the Funny How Comedy Podcast, which focuses on upbeat conversations with legendary comedians. It's free on Spreaker and iTunes. Check us out on Facebook at Funny How Comedy Podcast, on Twitter at Funny How Podcast, on Instagram at Funny How Comedy Podcast, or email us at Funny How Comedy Podcast at gmail.com. Hey, this is John Five, and you're listening to Dave and Dave Unchained. Check out the new podcast, The Rock Quarry, your place to hear in-depth interviews with some of Rock's most colorful characters, with your host, entertainment journalist, David J. Crible. The Rock Quarry is available for free on Spreaker and iTunes. You can check us out on Facebook at The Rock Quarry Podcast, on Twitter at Rock Quarry Pod, on Instagram at The Rock Quarry Podcast, or email us at The Rock Quarry Podcast at gmail.com. Van Halen, to a small degree, and myself to a large degree, uh, are primarily motivated by fear and revenge. When we discuss how we felt when Van Halen 1984 went number one, when Jump went number one, and this kind of thing, it was a feeling of satisfaction. Van Halen has always come down to the beach with a sword in one hand and a torch in the other. And we always knew that we were going to get up there someday. And we, and we took the worst possible avenue of getting there. We said, we won't try and accomplish it at all. We'll just lay back. <laughs> if God wants it to happen, then it will. We'll make records, we'll tour, we'll dress ourselves up, we'll play for our own satisfaction. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have an incredible guest today. You know her as the incredible blues singer, blues rock singer, I should say, Sash Jordan, who's got a new album called Rebel Moon Blues, which is a fantastic record. Sass, thank you so much for coming on today. <laughs> My pleasure, Dave That's... and Dave. <laughs> All right. My name is Dave Sass. Okay, great. Just for today, we'll go with Dave Sass, just for today. And as you can tell, she is full of sass, which is great, and she's always an incredible spirit. So Sass recently posted five different installments on her Facebook page about her work with the Van Halen brothers in 1996. Sass, I wanted to start off by asking you, how did you first hear about Eddie's passing, and how did you react? Oh, man, I, I was... Uh out in the backyard, and I got a text message from my friend Michael Devon, uh, the bass player, Michael Devon, and he said, did you see this? And I was like, are you sure this is true? Are you sure this is real? Because you know that feeling. Of course, like we have the same said, feeling, you know, yep. Oh, the worst. Oh. And then I started, you know, so then I, of course, I said, let me check on Twitter, <laughs> you know, the source of all truth. Sure. Ah, not, <laughs> however... <laughs> However, I, but it was just like it was everywhere. And then I saw the thing from Wolfie, and it was like, yeah, okay. It really, really kind of freaked me out, guys. And I haven't seen Ed in years and years. I mean, since, like, I think it was 2005 or something around there. Right. You know what I mean? It's not like we've been talking to each other either. You know what I mean? It's like, it was just very strange. The weirdest thing for me was just the thought of Al, because... I mean, they right. they were more like twins than right. brothers. Yeah, 
Yeah. I just, I can't even imagine. I just, oh, anyways. Yeah. So it's, yeah, he's gone and we have to get over it just like we have to get over everything else. Right. So he, and it just kind of makes sense in this year, doesn't it? It's like, yeah. I like Ed. Ed's like, yeah, I'm out. See you. I can understand. I'm like, I fully yeah. agree, my brother. I fully agree. Yeah. Like, whew. Although at the same time, I think that what's, what we're going into, I mean, this is not what we're here to talk about, but I just, I just want to say, Underneath all the horror and the freaking out and all the partisan and everybody hates everybody and all that shit. Yeah. There's a really good vibe. Something big and good is happening. Okay. And I think Ed went to the other side so that he could be part of the, you know, the heavenly band that marches this stuff in. Because I'm telling you, there's a, there's some, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and I don't think it's a train. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's hope not. It's, it sounds great. I think a lot of good music is going to come out from this dark time. I know a lot yeah. of artists yeah. are creating and creating and creating. So, so there's that. That's good to look forward to. So, now what made you write the installments about the Van Halen brothers? You did uh, five different installments on your Facebook page, all incredibly interesting. What brought you to do that? Well, because I was sitting there. I think it was second night, or was it the it was either the first or the second night after I heard, and I was just, I started having all these memories, you know, I started, it was, you know, it was intense, and the only way I know how to process stuff like that is to write either music or, you know, just stories and stuff like that, and I just started writing, and then I thought, you know what, I bet there's somebody out there who'd be curious to hear this, so I'm just going to. I was going to throw it up on my Facebook page and holy shit. Yeah. The reaction was unbelievable. Like over 350,000 people. Unbelievable. It was just, oh, I was like, Jesus, I should, you know, I should drop names more often. <laughs> well, uh <laughs> You started off by you received a mysterious call in 1996. And tell us, where were you when you received that call? And what time of 96 was this? I think it was like February. It was either January or February. It was definitely not after that. Okay. And I was at home. Okay. I was at my house in Studio City in the Valley, uh, oh. the San Fernando Valley. I, and the phone rang. like <laughs> I say, And there was this really weird character on the other end. And normally, you know, like I thought, I was just hang up because I was like, who, who the F is this? Like, who are you? But they seemed, they knew too much. They were saying stuff that it was like, I must know this person. You know, but why aren't they t saying who they are? Like, who are, who, why were they talking like this? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I, which is so unlikely because normally I just hang up. I right. really would. Right. But for some reason, I just stayed, I kept talking. Also, they were amusing, right? Because you know, it was just like what the fuck? they were kind of playful, but uh -huh. you know what I mean. They just would not tell me who the hell they were, and I was. I it started to become a game. I'm like, so who are you? <laughs> and they wouldn't answer. <laughs> no, it's classic Al. Classic Al. Of course, came to find out, you know, over the next couple of months, that right. it was just so him. Sure. And if sure. I if I'd known him at that time, I would have. Yeah, but anyways, but as soon as I hung up, the phone rang again, and it was Ray Daniels' office saying, "Did you just get a call from Al?" Like I, I think I say this in the in the story, but yeah. yeah. And I, I'm like, "Who the fuck is Al? And why are you guys calling me?" <laughs> right. <laughs> anyways, yeah, this is histoire. Did you know Ray? And did you know the band? Did you ever meet yeah. Ed or Al? No, God, no, 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 no. I'd never met them ever. And, and but Ray, I definitely knew from, you know, Canada. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you knew Ray. And so when you heard it was Al Van Halen, like, what was your reaction to that? Intensely freaked out. I was like, are you fucking telling me that fucking Eddie Van Halen has heard of me? <laughs> <laughs> So, so at that point, did, were they asking you to come to 5150 Studios? Yes, but they didn't tell me why. Well, they, he said, you know, we just need somebody to, we just need, like, to get somebody to sing on some tracks of God. We just, that's how they put it. That's okay. how Al and, put it? Um, it, it, it? Yeah, that's how Al put it, yeah, because it was Al. It wasn't Ed. 
Al was the talker. Al was the guy that went and got everything, you know, together. In my experience of them, don't forget, this is just my experience. Right. Right? right. I had no idea what anyone else's was. And there was no one else around. Like, I, I think I say this in the stories, but there's, there was no one else around. It was Spatty, Ed's tech at the time, Al, Ed, and Sass. Right, That's it. Scotty That's Ross, their road manager. There was never yeah. anybody else. What kind of music was it that they wanted you to work on? Do you remember what well, it was? This is the, the most amazing part of the whole thing, is that they, they had a couple of bits and pieces. I have a cassette tape somewhere in my house now that Ed gave me. And they said, can you just like maybe, you know, write a melody and do some lyrics to this? And I listened to it a couple of times. Now, don't forget, I was in my own world. I was very scattered. I had a lot of shit going on. And I wasn't really paying that much attention. Oh, it's so hard to explain. You got to understand, the, you know, it's, it's just where I was at at the time. And I wasn't paying that much attention. So I listened to it and I was like, man, I don't fucking hear anything here. This is like, it's just a mishmash of shit. It doesn't have any structure. And I can't really, I don't know what I, blah. And so I threw, it, I threw it to the side, right? Right. They never bugged me about it. They never said anything about it. And basically, we would listen to other people's music. And most of the time, I would sit and listen to them unload how they were feeling because they were not in a happy space. Okay. Right? And, and they what just were they unloading? To listen to them. The whole situation of the, I don't want to say anything rotten here. So, you know, just the whole breakup with Sammy at the time. So now at the time, right. Sam had uh, broken up with them in June of 1996. So was, was um, he, no, it was earlier than that? The, the, yeah. Well, because that's, I mean, that's what I, all I heard about. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what I get there is that, that it was just not something they were willing to share publicly until they were. Right. Gotcha. You know I mean? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. But okay, they gotcha. were, oh my goodness, believe me. They were definitely looking for somebody to replace him. Now, do you think that now, they were looking for now, you to replace them? I think they were considering it. I do not know that, you know, but there was no other reason for me to be there, which I found out from the horse's mouth, also known as Ray Daniels. So what happened was one day we were in the studio. I was down on the couch in front of the, the mixing board. They were behind it. And we were listening to, or talking, listening to something. And all of a sudden I get this. It's like the light bulb went on in my head, and I don't know what they said or what happened, because I can't remember that, like, precisely, but something set off the light bulb in my head where I suddenly had this idea. I think thinking of having a female singer in this band. Right. I didn't even say to myself, me, because that was even, that was so far out of my uh, ability to comprehend. It did, I didn't even dare to say to myself, I think she's having me. I just went a female singer wow. in my head. At which point I turned, I look at them and I said, guys, you're not actually thinking of having a female singer in this band, are you? Right? This is exactly. Right. And they both, and their eyes went, both of them, their eyes went super wide and they're looking at me and they both go like, no. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> now, and I'm so like, it sounds like they didn't think it was going to be a big deal. But why do yeah. you think it would be a big deal for Van Halen to have a female lead singer? Okay, so I grew up with Van Halen, with David Lee Roth, the ultimate macho man, right? Like the manly man of testosterone viewing from every pore of his body, you know, and like fucking strutting around and doing his whole thing with his assless chaps and his this and the, you know what I mean? Like that's Van Halen. To me, Van Halen was this mythical creature that was just, it oozed man. Right. It was just dude. It was full fucking dude. So I had that in my mind, right? Because all I could think of was hot for teacher. And I was like, this is, I can't, I can't fucking think of this. is ridiculous. I, mean, I, look, I look like an idiot. <laughs> that's all I'm that's what I'm thinking that. And then at the same time I'm thinking, and what if I did that and I was known as the person who ruined Van Halen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I clearly lack the balls. 
to do the job. I mean, I was, I was so afraid of the idea of like, and I'm like a girl, I'm gonna, and they're all going to go like, this is the worst shit I ever heard. I was like, that's what was really in my head. I, I was more afraid of that. Isn't that ridiculous? Listen, if it was now, that would not be a consideration.